Morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, week eight. Um, of course, after I, I designed the class, I, I was trying to um, have this class sort of follow the book, which, you know, which turned out to be kind of a mistake because um, they don't get to bonds until pretty far in about you know halfway through the class. And normally that wouldn't be that big of a deal, right? But bonds have played such a significant role in, um, in what's happened this past, um, uh, you know, this past few months um, as bonds are tied to interest rates and as the Fed increases interest rates, bond yields increase. And as bond yields increase, you got to remember, for the most part, if you're buying high quality bonds, you know, they, you know, they have little to no risk, right? And so there is this, this, this concept that you want to move to quality when, when the markets start to get a little um, unruly, if you will, which is obviously what, what we've been dealing with. And so interest rates rise, bond yields increase, um, people move from, from, uh, you know, investors that are looking for income will move toward stocks that will, um, uh, they'll move from stocks into bonds. And so understanding that relationship, um, it would have been great to do it earlier uh, in the in the class, maybe even before the whole concept of technical analysis and et cetera, even though that stuff's really, really important to understanding sort of the equity side of the markets. Um, it really doesn't connect so much to the debt side of the markets. And, um, uh, but, you know, sometimes it's hard for students to go read the first three chapters and then boom, we move to chapter eight and then boom, we move to chapter six. And, you know, it, it's hard sometimes. So maybe I'll, I'm going to have to, you know, rethink uh, the layout of this. Um, I think if, for the next few years, I think bonds are going to be playing a significant role. Um, and, and um, you know, but, but let's take a look at, uh, at week eight, right? So we've got another project popping up. So obviously we are, we are reading about bonds. Um, and so I've got a few videos in here that should be, should be helpful. Right. And, um, you know, why are bonds, bond yields sort of a, a key economic barometer? It's, um, uh, it, it, it's really interesting when you start looking at, at bonds, because we think, oh, the stock market, but at, at the end of the day, the bond market is just massive compared to the stock market, right? The equity market ownership in companies versus, you know, owning their debt, the debt markets are just massive. And so it's very interesting to understand and it's important to understand the role that bonds uh, play, right? Um, and then we've got project four, portfolio two, gonna be very, very similar um, uh, to previous project. We're not gonna go crazy until we get really to portfolio three. But once again, now we're dealing with maybe a, a 20 year old, right? Now this person doesn't have any kids. And, um, uh, you know, and, and that's assumed that, you know, they just, you know, they're a college graduate and, um, you know, they make 60 grand a year. They've been saving a little bit of money. They got $10,000 now. And, and once again, they want to, and they've got $200 to invest each month. And, uh, and the person wants to buy a house. Do not get hung up on, Oh, there's no way that they can buy a house with maybe the 15 or 20 grand that they might have in 10 years. Right. So let's assume they could double that money, uh, you know, from 10 to 20. Oh, there's no way they could buy. Sure. They can, you know, and you know, there, there's ways you could do it. If you've got income and you've got good credit, um, there's ways that you, can you go buy like a house in Danville or Alamo? No. You know, are you probably going to end up buying a, you know, a studio or a, maybe a one bedroom uh, apartment uh, or, or condo? Probably, you know, um, you know, do you have to leave the Bay Area? I don't know, but I, I don't want us to get hung up on that. What I want us to do is continue to focus on diversifying to an extent that um, we, we do not put that $10,000 at too much risk. You know, the, the reality is, is if we look at you know, the market um, just over the last year, right? I mean, look at this, you know, let's say, for example, you know, we started, uh, uh, you know, what, uh, 2021, a uh, 20, well, let's say we started, uh, you know, this year, uh, January, and this was the year we were going to go buy a house, right? This is the year we're going to go buy a house this year. 
And, um, and so all those amazing investments that you've made over the last five years where you had all this amazing appreciation, right? Look at this, it's beautiful, right? And then, you know, but boom, now we get down to, uh, you know, this year and, you know, we got the market set 20%. And, 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 uh, uh, and, it, and it sort of presents a, a challenge, right? Because we never know, uh, you know, within a, a five-year period when we're going to need the money. But, but rest assured, you're going to need the money in the worst possible time. So would this person just go buy the house anyway? Probably not. Interest rates are up. And, and uh, unless you want to start doing some really creative financial stuff, um, or you find the perfect place and you just assume that maybe the markets are going to be better in five years, um, you know, you probably are just going to delay, but that's, that is not for you to assume your job is to sort of figure out how during the second five-year block, um, if something like this happens, right, where we are just golden and, oh my God, the money is up, we're up 30% and, and, uh, Wow, we're the smartest people on the on the planet, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, reality hits, and, and now we're down twenty percent. What happens to this person? So that's what I'm really looking for. Is this? Can we be a little aggressive the first five years? Yeah, we could be a little aggressive, but we also have to be realistic because now we're talking about what what do we think is going to happen over the next five years? And what's happened over the last five days? Really, what's happened over the last month is. Um, you know, we, we've talked about volatility and, and, um, and this is a lot of volatility. Um, uh, you know, this, this, is a lot, this is like a lot of whiplash here. And w what's interesting is I, I listen to Bloomberg every, uh, every morning. Um, and then when I'm in my office, I've got Bloomberg TV sort of playing in the background because I really trust them as a, as a, as a, a source for business news. And, um, uh, it's very interesting, you know, you're listening to them and they're saying, well, why are the markets up so much today? And nobody has any idea. And um, and so then you, you get people that are trying to sort of speculate. Well, you know, we think that, um, you know, the Fed, the Federal Reserve Bank may stop raising interest rates at about 5%. And if they stop raising interest rates at 5% and the economy is faltering, right, uh, that they may either just stop there or they may uh, pivot and begin to lower interest rates. And, um, you know, even though the feds come out and said there will be no pivot, right? You know, when we've got inflate, when we get inflation at 8%, there's an argument, there's a, a, a money manager out there, a guy named Mark Mobius, um, Mobius Capital, the guy's 86 years old, I think, the guy's been around the block a bit. And he thinks, you know, interest rates need to go to about 9%. Right. He said, you always want interest rates sort of one percent higher than inflation. And uh, and assuming, you know, he's right, that would be a disaster for our economy. And, you know, so we've got uh, uh, a couple of things that are sort of at play here. Right. Is we don't have any idea what the Fed's going to do. I don't think the Fed has any idea what they're going to do. But what we, what we do know is that inflation is sort of going to be here to stay. It's not going away. They're not going to be able to. Uh, knock down inflation uh, in the next quarter or two. They're not right, and um, inflation is going to be with us for for a little while. And um, and that as interest rates continue to creep up, corporate companies aren't going to be able to expect to grow as much, which means that the job market, the labor market, which is already starting to soften, by the way, uh, is going to start to impact people. And so, you know, your ability to get 19 or 20 or 25 bucks an hour easy, is it's not going to be as easy. Um, and you're already seeing big companies starting to lay off people. I think mean, uh, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, uh, IBM, you got some of the biggest companies are starting to announce little pairing backs, right? Microsoft said they're going to lay off a thousand people. And it's probably because they hired too many to begin with. And so now they're just sort of separating things a little bit. And so it's just going to create more uncertainty. And, um, and so from, from an investment standpoint, uh, and when you're thinking about these portfolios, you've got to really think about this and what is, what is that last year when the person's going to need the money? Um, you know, what can we do to sort of mitigate some of, some of this, you know, what, what a difference a year makes, right? Um, you know, when we were, we were peaking up here just, you know, a year ago, 
uh, not even a year ago, nine, nine months ago, eight, 10 months ago. And uh, sort of see where we are today. So that's, that's really what I want to do with this portfolio. And then, of course, you've got your uh, traditional. I am really looking for you guys to be paying attention to what's going on uh, in, in the world today. Um, super, super important that you are plugged in, whether you're doing it using Twitter or you're like me and you just turn on Bloomberg News in the morning or you, you know, at work, uh, you just have the little Bloomberg thing up in the, up in the screen, um, you know, feeding what, what's going on in the market. So it's super important. Um, this is, this is all about data collection, right? So let's go look at, uh, rankings. Uh, uh, you know, we've still got. Uh, you know, uh, Emiliano is just rocking and um, doing a really, really good job. Very, very few trades. And uh, I don't see that the portfolio has changed too much, but he definitely had a great week and uh, and it sort of held on to it, which is good news. Um, you find good stuff, you just sort of stick with it. Thankfully, I'm moving up the board a little bit. Now I'm only down a little. Um uh, but you know, some of my some of the stocks in my portfolio are still just getting pummeled. Carnival Cruise Line, finally Beto, which is uh, by the way is um, uh, Bitcoin. I'm essentially neutral on down on Carnival Cruise Line, down on uh, Costco, Disney, which is in my favorite stocks. I I still don't understand, um, you know, why the stock is down where it is. I think the anticipation is. That the markets, uh, you know, that as the economy gets worse, people pull back and they're like, I'm not really all that interested in going to the parks. Um, movies are still a little, a little soft. Um, you know, I went to go see Black Adam on Thursday with my kids and, um, um, uh, you know, I would have expected, you know, this sort of big opening of a superhero movie, especially when it's Dwayne Johnson. It wasn't full. Um, you still could have got some pretty good seats just sort of walking up day of. So it's, um, you know, maybe that's, that's what's uh, the problem with Disney. Um, one, one stock I wanted to sort of point out that I think is really interesting. Uh, and for full disclosure, I own this in my portfolio, right? Um, is, is, is Verizon. And, and let me tell you why. There's a, there, there's a reason why, and, and th this is what I would be thinking about maybe for the first five years or even the first 10 years of, of, um, uh, uh, in that portfolio. And once again, I am not advocating for you to buy this stock for your personal portfolio. I own the stock and I'm going to be buying more of the stock next week. Um, the big reason is they've got this dividend, right? They're paying uh, $7, they're paying 7.38%. That's more than the 10 year uh, bond, right? It, it's paying, you can't get anything like that. And and it appears to be pretty secure. And what I mean by that is, is that the dividend that they're paying every year is $2.61. And if we look at, uh, you know, their earnings, you know, they are still expected to throw up some, some pretty good numbers for the next several years, which means that that, that, that dividend is probably secure. Are they going to raise it? No, but that dividend is pretty darn secure. And so if the dividend is so great, why is Verizon getting pummeled? And it's because they're losing subscribers. There was a, a news article, or I think it was in Barron's or something this weekend that uh, that talked about, you know, the fact that Verizon just made the decision that they were going to be doing a lot of CapEx, a lot of capital spending. And um, uh, as a result of that, you know, they're, they're losing subscribers because their rates are so incredibly high. And you know they're losing them to T-Mobile, and they're losing them to like Xfinity, and they're, they're, and Xfinity uses Verizon's backbone, if you will, but the, the the fee that gets paid to Verizon is much less, and so there there's just a lot of complications here. And but for patients, right, just to sort of hang out, you know, getting paid seven percent seems like a pretty good deal. And so something like a Verizon in a five year uh, proposal is probably not a bad idea. You know, if we look at the, you know, the analyst reports in general, they're saying sit tight. And most of the analysts, because the stock has fallen so much have, have, uh, have lowered their target prices, but I mean, it's still, I mean, it still looks pretty darn good to me. I, um, this is the sort of stuff I think, and it's a, it's, it's a utility ish sort of play pays a good dividend. Um, there is the potential for a growth side of this, you know, once they do get 5G installed across the country. So we'll see.
but but these are the sort of stocks you can put into your into these um, five, maybe even the full ten years where you can expect maybe Verizon will grow at about three or four percent a year, but then you take that dividend into account, and now you've got a total return of something like eleven or twelve percent. People would just love to get eleven or twelve percent every year, and um, of course you would not have gotten that from Verizon over the last few years because. You know, the Verizon over the last several years, it's just been a disaster. And um, once again, this is as a result of them raising rates and do your own due diligence, right? Um, uh, but, you know, def definitely a company I like, definitely a company I'll buy more of. Um, you know, but I'm not going to be buying a house in 10 years. So ultimately, it's up to you. So I hope you guys are enjoying the class. I hope you're learning a lot. I really enjoy listening to your uh, your thoughts. I love reading your proposals. Some of you got some good comments, some of you not so much. Uh, but at the end of the day, this really comes down to uh, trying to figure out uh, sort of that right balance of being aggressive in order to get enough of a return. But at the same time, um, uh, you know, making sure that you don't lose all the money, right? Because that would, that would sort of, uh, that would be a problem. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks. Have a great week.